All right, time to get started with this next one. I'm Sammy K. Powers. Thanks so much for joining tonight on this beautiful uh, thunderstorm. We were just talking about how nice it is just to sit inside and watch this beautiful thunderstorm. It just brings back those. Yeah, it's, it's starting to clear up a little bit, but it's still got that grim look. Um, Today we are um, looking at tracing. We're kind of get a high level view of uh, tracing um, and we're gonna be seeing how we can get some uh, flame graphs of our production PHP. Uh, I'm a software engineer here at Datadog and I work on the tracer extension uh, for PHP. Now, typically the, the point of this talk is to see how we can get more visibil visibility into our production stack. And if you're like me and you started a really long time ago uh, in this web development uh, thing, uh, we had maybe a server in our closet and we were kind of running PHP 4 on it maybe. Uh, we had this really cool website with lots of like flashy moving things and scrolling marquees and things like that. Um, and when things went wrong, uh, we had pretty much a one place to look. We had like either a syslog or like an Apache log we could look at and um, or just saw the error output right there for the whole world to see. Um, but the production stack is a lot more complicated than the server in the closet these days, um, especially when you're on something like this kind of structure that I randomly found on Google. Um, this is this is like a one request could be um, going through multiple hosts, multiple languages, all kinds of new services that just came out last week. Um, and it's really hard to kind of get a, a good idea of what per, what is happening in production. So we need a way of kind of getting a uh, an eyeball in there. And one way we could do that is with tracing. So what is tracing? Well, if we, if we look at the almighty uh, Wikipedia that's got all the answers, it says that uh, tracing is a specialized use of logging to record information about a program's execution, which is pretty ambiguous and doesn't really mean much. Um, so let's try to figure out what a trace is. Maybe that'll help us understand. So for this talk, we'll define a trace as a tree of nodes that we'll call spans that represent basic units of work. So maybe if we see an actual example of what this is, it'll make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to kind of give you a little history here by showing a, 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 a graph from uh, a very famous paper uh, called the Dapper Paper. It was uh, published by Google back in 2010. And they were trying to get visibility into their production stack. And when you would make a request um, in Google's infrastructure, the user would make a request, it would hit a server or a host or some service. Um, and that might actually need to talk to another service, service B, which needs to talk to service C as well. And then service C needs to talk to service D and E. And so trying to figure out, trying to figure out where this tr request is even going into, in their production stack, and then actually trying to figure out some metrics on, on that is kind of not super straightforward. And the goal is to try to get something that looks like this um, that we can kind of look at and um, see where there might be some, uh, maybe some performance bottlenecks or something that we could um, uh, have a little bit more visibility on. Maybe there's a certain service that's really slow or something like that. So in this, what, what we'll call these, uh, these uh, in this picture from before right here, these these boxes right here uh, we're gonna we're gonna um, define these as a, uh, a a unit of of work which happens over a timeline right um, a span of time so a good word for this might be a span and that's exactly what it's called actually now in a trace we're gonna have multiple uh, spans and when you put a bunch of spans together you get a full trace now the trace uh, the spans in the trace might be uh, a bunch of different services from a different different languages. Um, it could just be like a Lambda thing, server, serverless thing going on in AWS. Um, it could be a PHP application. Um, if if we're looking at if we're looking at each one of these spans and we're just sort of calling them services, service A, service B, service D, um, that can be uh, that could be a way for us to kind of illustrate that on on our trace. But if we had just PHP here, um, I don't know how many people remember from maybe like four years ago, service-oriented architecture was like a big buzzword in the PHP community. And everybody was like, you gotta go SOA, it's awesome. Everybody went SOA, well, a lot of people did. At least some of my friends did. And then afterwards they were like, wow, our production stack got 10 times more complicated. And now just to deploy a simple .env file, we have to come up with some really complicated solution to do some simple things. So microservices was the big buzzword, everybody was doing it, and they were taking these giant monoliths uh, and converting them into these little microservices, and we have all these little instances of PHP running all over the place. It's complicated. But what if we could get some visibility in this, and we could maybe uh, 
monitor each one of these uh, services and maybe even create uh, a map like this where each service is represented as like a node on a graph and we can see how these nodes interact with each other from a high level. That'd be kind of useful. Well, there's ways we can do this, but what if our, our, our infrastructure is very, very complicated and it's going out to lots of different places? It'd be really nice if we could just automate this and just get some awesome visibility into what's happening in production. So this is actually uh, uh, a service map from, um, that is based on distributed tracing. So in a typical request, when we're hitting lots and lots of services, um, it's, uh, we can zoom in on just one of these services, see how it's interacting with other services, if there's problem with this service and if, if uh, this problem is actually cascading to other, prop, uh, other services. And this is actually part of uh, something we're gonna see in just a second. But kind of zooming back in on the PHP world and looking at just PHP apps for a second, this service, so we, say we have a, a microservice that, that just handles something with users, um, it would be helpful if we had a little bit more information than just this service request took this amount of time. And we can maybe uh, go and look at some more metadata, but it would be helpful if we could actually get some, some more spans to kind of look um, deeply into this one particular service. And we can, luckily. Uh, here at Datadog, we have the PHP tracer. It's, it's quite new. Um, it came out in March 5th of this year, um, and it was released with version 0 0.15, and today we are 14 versions in at 0 0.29, so lots of uh, development has been happening on the tracer. It's been uh, morphing into something really great, um, and each release, um, there's more and more um, uh, uh, great features that come with it. So the, the kind of high level, how it works, kind of actually similar to um, the Blackfire setup. We do have a, an extension called DD Trace. You install the extension and uh, there's a, the Datadog agent, which you install on your host, um, which uh, does a lot of things. Um, it can parse logs, it can do, um, it can uh, pull in traces from other languages. Um, it, does, it does lots of things. Um, both of these are open source and on GitHub. Uh, the DD Trace extension is written in C, um, a lot of, PHP extensions are written in C because PHP is written in C. Uh, and the, uh, the agent is written in Go. So if you're into Go and you wanna send some pull requests and check out the agent, uh, go ahead and check it out. And the agent will send uh, out the traces to the Datadog UI and you'll be able to see all the information from the traces. Um, so the, the way you do this, uh, just quick uh, three steps. Um, log, uh, sign up at datadog.com, no credit card required. You just go in, there's a, there's a free trial there to just try things out. Um, you install the agent, install the extension, and then when you restart your uh, PHP SAPI, um, you'll start seeing traces uh, in the UI, and you'll get beautiful flame graphs of your production PHP, which is really, really handy when things go wrong. So I, just to kind of give you um, a, an example of, of the tracer in a real-world app, I have a personal server that has my blog and uh, my podcast and a couple of other sites on it, um, but I wanted to show you uh, some example traces from my podcast site. Uh, my podcast is the PHP Roundtable, which is um, a podcast of developers discussing topics that PHP nerds care about. Uh, it's a little bit on hiatus at the moment uh, because life is happening at the moment. Uh, so I'll be, I'll be coming back a little bit later. Uh, but right now I do have the extension installed. I am monitoring uh, the requests that come in. And I wanna kind of look at a specific use case that I have set up here. So the, the, the website is actually written on Laravel and I have a route here for my uh, for the downloads of the episodes. So in the RSS feed, um, I link to this file right here, but it's not actually a file, it's actually hitting some PHP because um, I wasn't able to get any visibility on my metrics and like how many people were downloading things because I was just uploading my episodes to an S3 bucket and parsing S3 bucket logs is terrible. Has anybody tried to do that by the way? Parsing S3 bucket, oh yeah. So you can feel my pain. Uh, I set up like an elk stack and pay, paid a lot of money for like a really expensive uh, AWS instance and I still didn't get any results. So I resulted to this. I'm gonna just uh, do redirects instead. That seems a little bit more simple. But getting visibility into this with the, with the uh, extension, uh, the DD trace extension, I'm able to get flame graphs out of uh, a simple redirect. So in this particular case, um, if, if I'm getting uh, something is happening with this redirect and it's, and it's happening very slowly, I can go in here and see that, oh, look, here are all my spans, the span of time. Remember, we've got spans of time here. And we're tracing one request, and this happens to be all PHP. The, 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 the light purple here is the Laravel, um, the Laravel spans, and it's tracing the pipelines for Laravel. 
Um, so out of the box, the, uh, the DD trace extension does know about Laravel, and so it's able to create spans based uh, custom for Laravel. And there's a couple of other um, services here, like you can see there's a, a guzzle request, which is in the, the um, what color is this, yellow? <laughs> and then guzzle under the hood is using curl to actually make the request. Um, these little green ones here are PDO uh, calls, and then there's a tiny little one here for mem memcache. Um, and I, I actually didn't set up memcache, this is just something that's happening out of the box with Laravel, and I saw the trace, I'm like, oh look, I, they've got memcache in here. Um, so if you'll notice here on the side here, we've got curl um, at the top of, our, of all of our services that are listed here. Um, I'll zoom in on that so you can see it. Curl's taking up 63% of this entire request. It's, it's technically a bottleneck, but right here, since the request's happening so fast, I don't care. Um, but if this were a bottleneck and it was taking up 63% of the request and the request is very slow, I know to focus on this first. Um, and if I examine this span, I can see that it's making a request to, to Google Analytics. And that's exactly what this does, is it, it actually um, tracks everything through Google Analytics. Um, there's another view for all the spans here. Um, in case I wanted to see these really long, longly named spans, I can uh, list them out here to kind of give a little bit of a, a, a better view. Um, but I also wanted to show out that there's other ways that you can debug this request or, or, or see where some bottlenecks are. So one of these little tiny uh, green uh, spans was from PDO. And if, say, for example, this green span was really, really long, um, unexpectedly, I can dive into the actual um, sanitized SQL requests and see if we're maybe doing some really awkward joins or something like that that might be slowing it down uh, unexpectedly. Um, but there's another really cool feature um, for errors. Um, if, there, if you're getting 500 errors or the white screen of death or something, uh, it would be really helpful if we could just see what the error was uh, right away. And um, the, the really cool thing about these, um, the, the trace is that it will show you the exact span that has the error. And sometimes that's the exact function that's giving the error. Um, and here we have, a, we have a service unavailable error, um, and we can even uh, get sometimes an entire stack trace to make it really easy to just hop in and, and see what's, what the problem is. But if that's not the problem, you can also um, debug a little further by, by looking at the logs that are correlated with this very specific request to see if there's something maybe um, that's erroring out on the log side. Um, but if, if all else fails, you can also correlate this trace with your infrastructure metrics. So maybe there's something in production that's feeling a little cranky today and you need to know, oh, that's what's causing this error. You can see, oh, this host maybe had, was running out of CPU at this point during this request and that's why, it was, why we're having an issue. So maybe the issue isn't actually with the app itself but with the infrastructure. Um, these traces happen over a broad variety of hosts and languages. Um, in this particular case, I think there's uh, a .NET application in here. Um, and then there's also a, a PHP application. There's a Laravel app here. And then that propagates to whatever that is. Um, I think that that's another language. So there's lots of different languages and services that are being um, concatenated into one distributed trace, which gives you a lot of insight onto each uh, individual request that comes in. Now, here's a little kind of uh, quick, quick, quick graph, I hope you can catch it, what's going on here, to kind of illustrate the different services that are, that are going on with, the, with these traces. So each color um, of these spans represents a, a separate service. And if you take each color and you represent them on, on a graph like we saw earlier as a node, um, each, of those nodes will, each of those nodes represents a service. And that's, that's where the service map comes in. And the cool thing about the service map, which is a feature of, uh, within the Datadog UI, is that this is generated automatically. You don't have to do anything. It just analyzes the trace data that comes in and realizes how these services are interacting with each other. And in the PHP Roundtables case, it's my simple like one EC2 instance on AWS. It's not very complicated, um, but um, uh, with, with my blog and my PHP, uh, with my um, podcast, um, I can see all my services and how they interact with each other. In this case, in PHP Roundtable, I've got a pretty, um, pretty straightforward implementation with uh, not much going on here, but in a distributed, uh, distributed, distributed request context, um, this could get very, very complicated. And with this, I have this, the, 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 at least the, the peace of mind that in production, at least I'll be able to uh, go it quickly and debug any performance issues or errors um, and, and, and know if those errors are related to my application or my infrastructure um, with just a couple of clicks, which is really cool. But I kind of, you know, this, this, this is one of my favorite things is to dive under the hood of things. Um, so I do kind of want to take a, a second to dive under the hood of the DD Trace extension. 
um, and kind of show you how it works. This, uh, in order to kind of understand this, I do need to give a too long didn't read version of the Zend engine if you've never um, kind of dived into how PHP works. So if you're not familiar with Zend engine, it's, it's, it's essentially the guts of PHP. And PHP, if you didn't know, is written in C. Here's a screenshot of part of the code base. It's not all the code base, but it's part of it. Um, if you're familiar with C, um, it, will, it might still look foreign to you because of so many macros. Uh, all the macros, you have to learn like a thousand and one macros when you learn PHP internals. Um, but no, but it's, it's definitely, um, it's quite a learning curve to get in there. Um, but to kind of like to really back up and just give like a super high level of how PHP, uh, how the, P the Zend engine processes your PHP scripts, um, it goes like this. So you have your PHP file here, um, and every, every C file needs an int main or, or an entry point. Um, PHP does have an int main, but it technically has two if you wanna really get into the weeds about it. Uh, the first int main, it comes from the SAPI layer, the server API layer. Um, and there's a number of SAPIs that exist in core. Um, you've got like the Apache 2 handler, you've got uh, FPM, uh, the CLI SAPI. Before PHP 7, there were tons of SAPIs. Like a, a huge, the directory was just full of all these old SAPIs that hadn't been used since like the 90s. Um, so in 7, they ripped out a lot of those. Um, now we're down to just a couple. Um, but uh, when you use the, the CLI, uh, for example, you'll go through the CLI SAPI first and the PHP script um, gets sent to the SAPI and then hands, hands that off to the Lexer and Parser. Now the Lexer and Parser looks at your PHP script and it looks first for valid keywords. So it's like, is this a PHP keyword? Yes. Is this a PHP keyword? Yes. And it, and it goes through each one and generates a token for each one of those. It's kind of like if you were just to get a, a bunch of words on a script and, there are, and you're trying to validate, are these English words? Yes. Are these English words? Yes. But just knowing that they're English words isn't enough. Like you could just have a bunch of random words that don't mean anything. So the next step is you have to see, do these words, uh, are they ordered in a way that actually makes sense? So at the Lexer and Parser stage, they do both of those things. And by the time it gets out of the Lexer and Parser and it's all valid, it's like, yes, this is valid PHP and it makes sense. Then it, um, it generates an abstract syntax tree, which is a feature that was added in PHP 7. We didn't used to have that before 7. Um, the abstract syntax tree um, gets sent to the compiler and then the compiler does some crunching and emits um, opcodes. And this is an important uh, thing to remember for knowing how the tracer works under the hood. So there's a, a bunch of different opcodes that do a lot of different things, but uh, once, once you get these opcodes, it takes the opcodes and sends it to the virtual machine or the executor. And the executor goes through each of the opcodes and um, executes the handler for each of those opcodes. And that's another core thing to understand about, um, to understand how the PHP tracer works is that they're um, executing the opcode handler. And then you get foo, which is how the P we go through all that just to see the word foo come on our screen. So that's, that's it's, it's a lot, right? <laughs> but of course, you use PHP to do a lot more than just foo. So under the hood of DDTrace's extension, is, uh, it, it is written in C um, and PHP. The C part is actually to tie it into the Zend engine. And the PHP part is for uh, mainly the integrations. Um, and the integrations are basically libraries like Guzzle or, um, or frameworks like uh, Symfony or, or Laravel or Cake. And it, it's able to um, basically formulate and define how each trace should be shaped uh, in the trace. Now PHP also, uh, the DD trace extension also supports open tracing, um, and which is kind of um, a, a, an effort to sort of um, almost standard, not standardize officially, but to kind of come up with a ubiquitous language or, or, or a lingua franca or just some sort of common language to describe these tracing terms across languages. Um, and uh, the idea was to, uh, for open tracing was to support distributed contexts as well. So out of the box, uh, the, the DDD trace extension does support open tracing. So if you're already uh, using open tracing, um, it will work with the tracer. So here's a little bit of a, a snapshot of just the PHP side of things from the tracer. Um, this is to trace the exec function out of PDO. Um, and basically the way it works is we have the, a DDD trace function that registers the class and the method name that we want to trace. And then there's this callback here that we call a tracing callback, and that gets executed in place of PDO exec. Um, the tracer is pulled, um, this gl global tracer, you might be familiar with this if you're familiar with open tracing. Um, this is the way that open tracing does it. Um, we grab uh, something called the scope, which is another term from open tracing. Um, and then we, we uh, pull the span out of that. So the span has basically started the timer here. And we add some metadata. So in this case, we take, we're taking one of the arguments that was sent into exec, which is the statement, um, and we're setting metadata onto this span. 
And then we have this custom uh, function here called DD trace forward call. And it acts like the name of that function that I always forget, which is user, is it user func, call, user call func, call user func, thank you. And, and the variant call user func array, right? Uh, I always have to look it up because I always forget. You know, in 1999, I was still looking it up and in 2019, I'm still looking up the name of that function. Um, so we have this special one because uh, this, this will actually do a little bit more magic and or not magic, more heavy lifting to forward the context that this, the original uh, call was, um, was called in. Uh, and then we also set some additional metadata with the results and close out the scope, which actually stops the timer for that span. Now to take it to the C level, uh, we tie into the, the PHP APIs uh, that are available from this end engine. And one of those APIs exposes the opcode handlers that the VM executes. So this is uh, uh, the function that you need to, to call in, in C, is then set user opcode handler. And you just tell it which opcode you wanna overwrite and then your the, the the function pointer to what you want to actually call. In PHP, we trace three different opcodes. We do zen do uh, i call, zen do f call, and then f call by name. Uh, the i call is an opcode that was added in PHP seven, and I don't know why I keep using the word new for PHP seven because it's been out for years now, but it feels new to me still. I don't know why. But here's the actual code that ties into the opcode handler. Uh, so there it is, zen do i call, zen do f call, zen do f call by name. And we are, we are using our function dd trace wrap f call, which is the one that actually checks to see if this is a function that we need to trace. Um, not to show you the full, um, uh, the, the full function that we were just looking at because it's open source and you can look at it and there's a lot to it, but I'll take out a really uh, important bit here, which is um, we want to look up a specific function name here uh, and we do, um, we do a hash lookup um, from an actual hash table. So whenever we register a function that we want to trace, we put it into a hash table. And this hash table right here is the same exact hash table that arrays are powered by, by a lot of the things under the engine are powered by, surprising amount of things under the in the engine are powered by. So we're just using the, actually the native very efficient hash table lookup to do this. And if it finds, uh, it finds this particular method uh, or function in the hash table, then it says, yes, we want to trace this. Once we get our list of spans and everything that we want to trace, we serialize it with message pack, and then we use libcurl to send it to the agent. And like that, we have traces. Poor alien guy, you know? He's in every one of my talks, I think. <laughs> but that's it. I, that's, thank you so much for, for joining. Uh, enjoy the Aircon. <laughs> we have Mr. McCola, yes. <laughs> Yes. This one? Oh, yes, the mic. Good call. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> thanks. Here it comes. Uh, so the opcode handler uh, is going to invoke the extra, your anonymous function here. And then before it calls the original PDO exec function, is there something not hidden here? I'm like, curious is like, what if PDO exec throws an exception? Is there like more here that you just took out to fit on? Yeah. The oh, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, okay. This is there's a lot going on in this. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> this is the very very truncated version. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> All right. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, question about the different services you mentioned the uh, microservices so how do you have an ex did you have an example about that or uh as far as like the service maps yeah so how does it like know that this other call in other processes is then handled by the same one so all of this is generated based on the trace data that comes in so when a trace comes in and it has uh each of these colors um i mean they're colorful here here but like uh, each span has a, a definition of what service it's related to. And so it's able to look at all of that data and then generate the span based on how these services are related, uh, how these spans are related. So like this blue one, for example, would be like the top level span. And the green, the green ones underneath um, would say that my parent span is this blue one. And so it's able to make those correlations that way. Oh. <laughs> so uh, how does it then like, does it go with the... Was it open trace? 
like okay, like like with an, is it like a, a header that it's giving for the uh, Guzzle call or yeah. So um, tip, uh, all, not all services happen over the wire, uh, communicate over the wire, I should say. Um, some of these are happening within, say, for example, a Laravel app. Um, say like a like you have uh, something like Memcache that you're interfacing with locally on your host. If you are sending a request out to some other uh, microservice, uh, the trace ID that is um, uh, the, the span ID that is associated with the trace that's making that call will get serialized on the wire um, in the header of that request. And then it will be uh, ingested by that next tracer, um, trace enabled uh, service and it will be able to continue that trace on. I guess for this diagram, should everything really be nested under the green and only the green is nested under the top level? Probably, yeah, Probably? Okay. yeah, yeah. Right, you're absolutely right. I just okay. copy pasted from the blog. Okay. I didn't even think you about that. You can fix but... this before Wednesday. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so uh, asking if, uh, so it, this, it looks like the green is actually the only child of blue, but when, it's, when it splits out, it makes it a separate, uh, like all of those three should have actually shown up under that one. So it should go bomb, bomb, and then three for that second one. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's technically incorrect. <laughs> yep, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Explain a little more how it breaks the services, of like what it considers one service versus another. The service is, uh, it's, I had, okay, so service, is very kind of, well, we're, we'll say it's kind of a loose definition. Um, some people like to um, break it up further than just, this is the MySQL server. Some people actually like to name their service, this is MySQL and this specific table. So if you wanted to get to that level of granularity, you have that flexibility. How would you figure out? Oh, uh, like implementation details on how you would do that. Um, there, uh, I don't have an example of how, I don't have, yeah, I don't have a slide, um, but when you create the test, uh, the span, there's a way that you can set the service name and you can set it to whatever you like. Yeah. Uh, so the traces, do they just cover uh, time spent? Do they cover memory usage or anything like that? Or is it just start, start stop time? Uh, at the moment, the PHP tracer does not do anything with um, memory or anything. However, there are, um, where is it? There it is. Infrastructure metrics automatically associated with every trace. Um, so you're able to tie that specific host metrics at the time of that trace to this specifically. I'm not sure about the other tracers for the other languages, like if they had that built into the trace or not. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs>